Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, my friend, to my channel on YouTube, Drilling and Workover. This is Abdul Aziz Gab. I am a credited instructor in IWCF Well Control and IEDC Well Sharp. Also, I am a credited instructor in IEDC Mod Engineering for Basic and Advanced Mod School. Uh, today, inshallah, we will take uh, the last lesson in the solid control and uh, it will be about the centrifuge and the mixing equipment. Uh, we will talk today about one of the most important uh, solid control equipment, it's called the centrifuge. And let's take some notes about the centrifuge before, uh, before talking about its uh, composition. Here, what is the meaning of centrifugal force? Okay, can you as you, can you imagine this guy? Okay, he has this ball. This ball is away from his uh, from his arm. Okay, and he is rotating this. He is rotating this uh, this ball slowly, slowly, then fast, fast, and until it takes the acceleration. And at this time, if he throw it from his hand it will go to go it will go to very fast place this is called the effect of centrifugal force okay this mechanism is the same used in the centrifuge how this occurs firstly there is something called a conveyor okay this conveyor is inside a pole and the conveyor is rotating is rotating at with the same direction of the bowel but in a lower velocity than the bowel so that the solids are coming in the conveyor and it has some blades so it gives it the first acceleration or the the beginning of the acceleration once it become accelerated it take it is taken to the bowel with, with the highest Velocity or the highest RPM, so it can be uh, it can be separated or the high uh, solids or, or the large solids can be separated and we can get rid of it or it is dis discharged from the centrifuge. This is the same mechanism as I told you. He this guy is first going slowly by slowly to rotate or slowly to rotate this uh, ball slowly until it takes the acceleration so it becomes very fast and at this time if he uh, at, at this time when it is very fast he can uh, throw it from it, his hand and it will reach to very far distance and this is the same for the centrifuge separation but taking take some we will take some notes about the centrifuge uh, or the liquid before we are going to the separation there is very important law it's called stock stokes law uh, what is the meaning of stokes law that we have already talked about in the uh, in the descender desilter or the hydrocyclones but here the centrifugal forces here it's not like the same uh, in the hydrocyclone because in the hydrocyclone it was due to the centrifugal bomb feed or due to the feed pressure okay but here it's due to the mechanical rotation so if you need to make high separation for the uh, solid or centrifugal uh, settling velocity okay it depends on the particle diameter and in the particle density and in the liquid density okay and here the liquid viscosity okay and here this is called the center centripetal acceleration or what's known as the acceleration as you see here for the solids so this is very important to know this is the okay you cannot you cannot you cannot deal with the particle density you cannot uh, control the liquid density you cannot uh, you cannot uh, con uh, control the particle diameter but you can control the uh, liquid viscosity okay and you can control the rbm or the acceleration so that you can control the liquid is a liquid the is a liquid uh, viscosity by adding water okay to the uh, inlet to the feed inlet or the to the tube in the feed inlet 
so that it makes the viscosity to be very low and at this time it will be easy to uh, be separated from the uh, from the liquid okay also for the solid to be separated from the liquid also we can make high acceleration and at this time it will lead to a high centrifugal settling velocity okay so the most important and the most controlling parameters as i told you are the liquid viscosity and the acceleration uh, the acceleration okay here as we are talking okay this is the, the schematic shape of the centrifuge as i told you this is called the conveyor as you see this is called conveyor blades okay this is conveyor conveyor blades okay and around it it's called a bowel around it there is something called a, uh, a bowel okay the conveyor as you see it is uh, uh, and the bowel also are not the same size uh, it has od uh, has a small od and small uh, uh, outer diameter okay because it is it's not the same it is not it's like the wedge okay it is like the wedge so it has larger od and uh, smaller od okay and the conveyor is the same so why the conveyor has has this uh, <clears throat> has this shape okay and why it is uh, from larger to smaller or something like this because if you remember if you remember in the first slide here that i told you that this guy must start at first by slow rotation until it gets the acceleration so this is the same here the conveyor here the conve once once the this is the feed inlet once the the mud is coming from here until it takes the full acceleration it has to be start from the first by slowly slowly then fast 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 until it it is discharged as a, so that the particle or the larger particles are separated okay are separated at first and then by the high velocity in the same direction of the conveyor the lower or the colloidal solids can be separated so so that the the centrifuge okay the centrifuge uh, can 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 separate all the types of solids whether high gravity whether low gravity whether large particles whether low, lower particles the centrifuge can make real cut in mud weight in very fast time or in very short time okay so take care about this okay so what are the principal components of the decanting centrifuge number a or number one is called bowel or drum as you see number two is called conveyor or scroll number three is called the gearbox and the gearbox here in order to change the velocity or the rpm uh, to have differential velocity for example from higher or lower according to what i need to separate if i need to separate uh, low gravity solids it will be very high rpm but if i just need uh, if i need i don't need to separate the high or the weighting material like barite so i will use just uh, 1800 or 1600 rpm so the gearbox uh, can change the velocity from uh, from uh, one to another easily. Uh, number four, a frame and collecting vessel. Number four, five, the feed inlet and distribution. So what is the principle of the operation? As you see here, this is the feed inlet. Okay, it's coming from here. Okay, here we are. Here we take, we put the inlet of the mud is going from here. And it is taken from the last bit in the uh, solar control. It's for example, from the desilter, okay? So this is very important one and it comes here until the as you see here through the conveyor from the inside there is something is called the feed tube in the acceleration chamber okay this is the feed tube and it is not shown it cannot be shown okay this is from here it's called as you see here feed tube this feed tube permits the fluid to come to come here and this is as you see this is the conveyor this conveyor is rotating, okay, is rotating at high velocity, okay, it's already high velocity, okay, but much lower than the bowel, okay, the conveyor is high velocity, but lower than the bowel, so the bowel is the highest, okay, 
and this gives the or the start of the acceleration or the steady acceleration uh, the start of the acceleration of the particles or of the fluid so that this acceleration separates the solids uh, or the larger solids or the higher uh, higher density solids from the uh, lower one and it is discharged to get to the other one which is here the bowel and the bowel is around the conveyor this bowel is rotating at much more higher than the uh, the conveyor so it it helps to uh, separate more finer and uh, the low gravity solids are separated by the bowel and it can be discharged through the discharge uh, discharge uh, opening and everything will be okay and here as you see this is the gearbox to change the velocity or to change the rpm from one to one according to which solids you need to separate and which solids you need it to be to be in the same mud um so as i told you the bowel and conveyor are rotated at speeds between 1500 up to 4000 rpm okay depending on the power diameter uh, this rotation develops centrifugal force as i told you sufficient to settle the solids along the inner surface of the bowel wall okay and after this the gearbox is controlling or is used to rotate the conveyor and the bowel at slightly different speeds slower or faster and as i told you the bowel is much more than the conveyor this is speed differential uh, this is speed differential uh, discharges solids from the machine uh, the decanting type of the centrifuge increases the forces causing the separation of the solids by increasing centrifugal forces as i told you due to the conveyor which has blades with different diameter and this di difference in diameter gives the acceleration to be more and more and more the decanting centrifuge consists of conical, uh, conical uh, horizontal steel bowel rotating at high speed with a screw-shaped conveyor inside. This conveyor rotates in the same direction, in the same direction as the outer bowel, but the conveyor is less in velocity than the bowel. Okay, the high rotating speed forces the solids to the inside wall of the bowel and the conveyor pushes them to the end of the discharge the performance parameters the performance parameters for any uh, for any uh, centrifuge number one the g force it depends on the bowel width and on the rpm number two the viscosity the viscosity of the liquid it has to be as low as possible the cake dryness okay it has to be dry as possible bond uh, depth and processing capacity and finally the bowel conveyor differential and torque all these are affecting the performance of the uh, centrifuge now with the implications of the bowel ge geometry and rpm as you see here the more the g force the more the separation okay but the g force or the uh, the g force what it depends on it depends on the rpm okay and the bowel diameter so that if you have a centrifuge with larger bowel diameter this means that its, its uh, separation will be much higher than that with the uh, less diameter also also the higher the rpm the higher the g force which means that the higher the separation will happen so that as you see here from here larger bowel diameter means high g force for the same rpm high rpm means high g force longer bowel means greater retention time okay and higher rpm and g force means more wear and tear down time bowel dimensions and g force are applications dependent okay what is the effect of variation uh, in the process parameters as you see here okay the from the low from the stocks low okay the particle size okay as the particle size is 
uh, smaller as the separation efficiency will be lower. But when the particle size are larger, this means that the separation efficiency will be higher. Well, that's why, because as I told you that the higher the or the larger the solids means the larger the density which can give more acceleration and can be separated easily. Uh, the separation efficiency also about the viscosity. At the low viscosity, there will be high separation, but at the high viscosity, there will be very low separation efficiency. And finally, the feed rate. The feed rate. As the feed rate is small, this means that the volume is not high or it is not uh, high, which means that the centrifuge can handle it and they can separate uh, they can be separated easily okay but as the feed rate is very high the separation efficiency will be very low also the is the regulating possibilities okay for the degree of the solids uh, degree of solids recovery as the bowel speed are high okay as you see here this means that the, there will be a high degree of solid recovery okay or removal as the differential speeds between the bowel and conveyor are high also the degree of solids to be recovered will be high and also the liquid radius which means the liquid radius means that the bowel radius okay it means this uh, as it is a larger radius okay as it is larger radius the degree of solids will be very low but as it is small it will be much more uh, recoverable what are the main two models of the centrifuges number one is called 414 okay 414 centrifuge it's bowel 14 inch in 36 inch this means that this is the larger outer diameter and this is the lower outer diameter, okay, of the bowel. Uh, sometimes this is used with high, some hydrocyclones. Uh, first stage of the dual centrifuge, it's useful in reclaiming barite. So take care about the applications of the centrifuge. Like, for example, if we need it as a barite recovery, we have to use two centrifuges in row. Two centrifuges in row. This is for the barite recovery. But for only low gravity solids, if we use the two, there will be in parallel. But one is more than enough. Uh, operate. It's it can be operated at 1600 up to 2400 RPM. And as you see, the RPM controls the throughput. Okay. Number two. It's 15. Uh, it's 518 it's 518 centrifuge and as you see the bowel also is 14 inch and its outer diameter is 56 this means that its separation efficiency will be higher so we can use it in the uh, separation of low gravity solids for example its ability to handle high volumes it's longer bowel means more retention time for the finer cut point, and it is used with chemicals for dewatering applications. Its ability to remove colloidal side uh, particles is very high. Okay, so this is operating guidelines for barite recovery. As I told you, the barite recovery needs two centrifuges. Okay. Take care that always wash out the centrifuge on the shutdown. Why we have to to, uh, to wash the centrifuge uh, on wash down on shutdown because the solids may make some stuck in the centrifuge if it is not washed properly and routinely from time to time. Number two, check centrifuge performance, the flow rate, and the solids of the returns and discards routinely. Okay, so you have to take. Uh, sample from the inlet and sample from the outlet and uh, to compare between them and the mud weight and also in the uh, solids percent by the retort test. Uh, centrifuge applications for weighted mud. If you have a weighted mud and you need to, to use the centrifuge, for example, 
it will take all the barite if you use just one centrifuge because the center the barite is 74 micron and low gravity solids or colloidal are two or three microns so at this time barite will be discarded so we have to make a new technique to make the barite recovery in the weighted mud. What is the what is the technique? It's called dual centrifuges. The dual centrifuges can be rigged up for barite recovery in row, in row, not parallel, in row. So one take from the suction and the other takes its suction from the uh, first centrifuge. Okay. The first centrifuge recovers the barite and send it back to the mud system, okay? And, uh, and the first centrifuge, like for example, the 418, okay? Or 41, uh, the, the, the 414, for example, it is rotated at the lowest possible RPM, which is about 1600, so that the barite cannot uh, be separated. So the first centrifuge recovers the barite and send it back to the mud system. And the overflow is sent to the second machine or to the second centrifuge to remove the low gravity solid and send clean mud to the clean mud back to the mud system again. The dual centrifuge, as I told you, 414 reclaims the barite and 518 cleans fluid from the uh, return from 414 and it is used to remove the colloidal size. Uh, particles that are detrimental for plastic viscosity. Okay, and it recovers also the valuable chemicals. And this is the rig up, as you see, the low speed centrifuge. As you see, this is the feed bomb it takes, and and it gets it separated the barite, and this is the barite is bumped here again to the mud system, and the the uh, what's known as the low gravity solids here are bumped again in the mud or catch tank, it's called the catch tank, where the, the suction of the second or, or the high speed centrifuge takes from it, okay, they take from it again, okay, they take from this again, and they make this card to the solids, and also they, uh, they can uh, take the low gravity solids to be separated from the system. As you see, this is the system, dual centrifugal system, it has to be in series, in series or in uh, row, okay? Uh, synthetic mud examples, this is the same. We use the uh, 414 centrifuge, okay? We, as you see, its feed rate is 17 gallon per minute. Its feed weight is 17 BBG, for example. And the discard is barite. We get the barite return. And then we talk the other one, it's called approximately its feed rate is approximately 6.7 GBM. This is the effluent return, and they can make this card for the fine solids. Okay, so this is very important. Uh, the centrifuge applications used for unweighted mud, we use only one centrifuge, or for example, if there is too much solids, we can use both of the centrifuges, but they have to be in parallel and they take from the same suction. Centrifuges are set up or are rigged up in parallel configuration. Both remove low gravity solids and second clean the fluid back to the uh, system, mud system. The mud recovery system, okay, uh, for cutting dryers. There is something is called cutting dryer. Uh, the cutting dryer is a type of centrifuge, okay, but it is used mainly to uh, get rid of the uh, oil base. Uh, in the cuttings, okay. This is uh, called the auger, okay. There is auger and there is centrifuge dryer, uh, centrifuge dryer, and this is very important in order to uh, check for the retention oil cutting. Uh, if you make the, the test of the retention oil cutting or ROC for the oil based mud, you will see the percent of oil it, is, it can be very high, and we need to to uh, to make management for the waste of the or the cutting and we need to dump it for example so we have to make it dry as possible this is for oil based mud and, and sometimes we are using it also for water based mud especially in zero discharge area okay and some uh, due to the environment problems uh, or due to environment issues 
The cutting dryers reduce the oil on cuttings in an effort to make cuttings pass environmental regulation. Okay. Uh, the cutting dryers, as you see, the feed systems can be through the gravity, can be by the auger. Okay. And as you see, the gravity, why we make it uh, for the gravity? The auger is put in the uh, to the up to up. Okay. It's rig up has to be up, not down. So that under the gravity, the, the solids can be uh, separated from the oil e, uh, or from the oil based mud easily. They use the auger. We can use also vacuum plus the auger, the auger or vacuum plus the uh, positive displacement bump. And the dryer it can be vertical, it can be horizontal, and the effluent of the centrifuge has high speed with back drive. As you see here, this is the fluid is coming from here and why the acceleration was very high velocity okay this is called also vortex it's called vortex dryer this is called vortex dryer because it makes very high okay as you see very high acceleration here okay and so that the fluid uh, the fluid is taken from uh, uh, as you see here the the fluid can be taken in the effluent okay from here and the uh, as you see the dry cuttings is taken from number 12 as you see here and the uh, to the other way where we can get rid of these cuttings easily now we will talk about very important topic it's called the mud mixing uh, equipment like agitators and mud guns the agitators as you see this is called agitator this is a motor and this is called agitator this is impeller okay and these are blades and these blades are designed with some angles so it can help in mixing the fluid uh, as you see there are two types of mud mixing as you see the mechanical agitator and the mud guns the mechanical agitator are used uh, they, they use an electric motor to drive the impeller blade which makes the mud in a specific pattern through the tank. What is the main problem? What is the main problem of the agitator? Uh, actually, the tanks are uh, rectangular shape. So in the corners, the mixing fluid or the mixing cannot be properly, or the fluid cannot be properly mixed. It cannot be properly mixed due to the, uh, because the, the acceleration of these blades cannot reach to these corners cannot reach to these corners and check about the suspended uh, solids agitator selection the selection select the proper size and number of agitators is based on the maximum mud weight the bit dimension length width and height also the bit function uh, mixing or storage tank uh, number two this is called the mud gun. This is mud gun. It has here a nozzle, okay, and it has a feed pressure from here, where where the, the it takes the mud from here, and it is uh, it get out from the nozzle, and so that it helps to make shearing for the fluid. So it is very important. <clears throat> it's very important in mixing the oil base because the oil base needs too much shearing for the oil basement. Uh, number three or the last one is called the Hobart mixing tank. NOV provide four inch and six inch hoppers along with a stand uh, alone shearing unit. It's called the turbo shear. The four inch hopper can be equipped with one inch or one and a half nozzle and the one and a half nozzle is the standard. The six inch hopper can be equipped with one and a half or 12 hand, uh, or uh, two inch or also two and a half nozzle, but the two inch is the standard. As you see, this is the handling capacity of the uh, hopper. As you see, the inlet feed pressure or the inlet pressure uh, Head, for example, has 15 feet or 50 feet or 80 feet or 100 feet, and according to the nozzle size, okay, it can handle. Uh, this is our. These are the amounts in pounds. Okay, so according to this, according to this graph or to this uh, table, 
you see that the hover has a joint venturi tube this joint venturi tube uh, makes this joint venturi tube makes a, a vacuum okay makes something like the vacuum together okay so its inlet pressure is lower than uh, okay sorry it's uh, the inlet pressure is much more or higher than the downstream one the upper stream is double the downstream so a hover with joint venturi operates with a downstream back pressure of up to 50 percent of the inlet head okay this is for the proper operation for the hover and joint venturi size are matched to the nozzle size okay uh, to ensure the greatest feed rate while providing the highest shear rates uh, the liquid stream leaving the nozzle expands as it enters the hopper mixing chamber and the, add the additives are sucked into the hopper mixing chamber by the action of the liquid stream leaving the nozzles here what is the hopper feed rate is a function of the additive density for example the low density additives having a specific gravity of 2.6 like the bentonite are mixed by the hopper much slower than the high mud uh, or the high add dynasty additives like the barite which has 4.2 this is why because uh, as it is high uh, it can it can be uh, evacuated easily without a problem not like the uh, lower one uh, hopper rule of thumb okay this is very important test have shown that with 80 feet of the feed head and six inch hopper with two inch nozzle can handle about eight eight one hundred eight means eight, eight uh, number okay uh, of one hundred pound sack of the bright bear minutes uh, and about three point five sacks of gel bear minute so that this means that the bright is much more than in handling uh, than the bentonite one uh, NOV provides a dust collector for its uh, hoppers. This is why, in order not to make a lot of problem in the environment and to be in good working uh, environment, uh, the air inlet is at the bottom of the dust collector and draw the air and the dust into the polypropylene bag filter. Uh, here I have already. Uh, May I, I, I have already uh, make a video or uh, make a video for the hopper and I have already uploaded it so you can check it uh, later inshallah uh, thank you very much for this lessons in solid control equipment this is the first compartment or the first part in the advanced mud school and I hope inshallah to continue with you about another topics like the hydraulics, like the uh, hydraulics and the rheology and the logical models, whole cleaning, all these we will talk about inshallah later. Thank you very much and see you later inshallah. If this video appeals to you, please share, like, subscribe. This is your channel, not mine. And see you later inshallah. Goodbye.